When an authority must travel anywhere in the modern world, he takes his bodyguards with him. In Roman times, emperors and other authorities did not go anywhere without theirs, the lictors. The word lictor derives from the Etruscans, a people who lived on the Italian peninsula and occupied territories that would later be occupied by the Romans. It was from these people that the Romans drew inspiration for their lictors. According to the Roman historian Titus Livius, the first lictors were selected by the mythical Romulus, who designated 12 people to conduct this prestigious duty. However, there is no agreement on why exactly 12 people were chosen. According to one theory, Romulus appointed this number because a priest who analyzed dreams and created omens saw 12 birds in his vision depicting Romulus's future dominion, implying that this was a sign of his ascension. Titus Livius, on the other hand, disagrees, pointing out that Romulus was most likely directly influenced by the Etruscans, who had a candidate for each of their 12 states. To become a lictor, a person had to be a figure of integrity, and at the very least, a free Roman with high physical skills. On most occasions, they were appointed by a soldier or a reputable figure in the state. However, most lictors were selected directly by the powers they were to protect, ensuring that only individuals trusted by that person oversaw their protection. In Rome, lictors wore a toga. Outside the city, they wore a red military garb, the sagum. At funerals, they wore black robes. Their salary varied depending on the authority they protected or their rank, but it was usually around 600 sesterces. The lictors oversaw protecting all Roman authorities who held the imperium, such as senators, magistrates, or consuls. They were allowed to use sticks adorned with fasces, which were tied bundles of wooden rods, and axes when they were outside the pomerium, which was Rome's symbolic border. They were to follow their lord wherever he went, keeping him safe at home, in the streets, in public baths, or in the forum, remaining by his side whenever he went to places with crowds or potential commotions. An authority could only dispense with his lictors when addressing a higher authority, or visiting a free city. On these occasions, the lictors formed an orderly line in front of their master, with the most important lictor, known as a proximus or primus, organizing the advances. It was their mission to keep danger away from their master in the case of riots or huge crowds. They had plenty of power to do so, having the right to punish and arrest Roman people if their master ordered it. The number of lictors assigned to an authority was determined by its power and size. A dictator like Julius Caesar could have up to 24 lictors, whilst a consul or proconsul could have 12 or 6. During the imperial period, however, emperors were escorted by 12 lictors, a number that was doubled later in Domitian's reign, when he prescribed the number of 24 lictors to protect emperors. In extraordinary circumstances, lictors could follow famous persons who were not members of the Roman state to special occasions such as funerals. Despite their prominence, several organizations eventually lost a lot of authority or were extinct during the late Roman Empire when the mechanisms of its monarchy were already eroding, such as the Praetorians and the Lictors, who were both summarily eradicated. Even after their demise, these warriors managed to immortalize their name in history, guaranteeing that they will be regarded as one of the great symbols of the might and grandeur of the ancient Roman leaders. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel.